Hi everybody. Thought I'd make a video on uh, how I'm making these Delrin hand pieces. Um, uh, I'm really satisfied with the Delrin and I probably won't make any more metal metal ones. So what I've done here is I've, uh, I've got some more uh, Delrin, different color. It comes in two or three different colors. I think you can get it in white, black, uh, blue maybe a red but I ordered some black and I'm gonna go over uh, how I make these and uh, the tooling that I use so if you guys are interested in it this would be the way to go especially if you've got a small lather even the guys that are still making them on the uh, are trying to make them on the on a drill press this stuff's going to be a lot easier to work with than uh, stainless steel. So, something to something to think about. I'm sold on it. I don't uh, like I said. I doubt I'll make any more uh, metal ones. So, what I'm going to do is go through my setup here and the tooling that I'm going to use uh, to make this thing. And one of the things I do is I. You probably can't see the material here, so let me put the contrast out here. As I pull my material out to about an inch and a quarter. Keep it as close to the chuck as I can, and what I do, normally the first operation would be to face it off, but since this piece has already been faced off, I don't need to do that. So I'm going to go right into putting a 45 degree on the edge of it. And then I'm going to put a thread relief at one inch and cut the threads. So first thing I need to do is I like to keep my quick change tool holder squared everything because I have my tools set up on square right now it's loose and all over the place so one way I can get it squared up is use my one two three block bring it in here to the chuck and now it's square tool holder square to the chuck and I'll tighten it down and make sure I'm staying square I believe that'll be close enough. Double make sure she's tight. And now uh, I'll square it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a 45 on. And get some contrast. To it. Let's see if we can get you a little closer here. All right. And what I do is come up to the edge of it, and right as I bump it, I'll go in 40 thousandths. touching it and I'll dial it in for you. 10, 20, 30, 40. Give me a nice little chamfer on the end there. And then I'll move to my parting tool that I'm also using as a groove tool. do is I come up here and I bump the end of the part with the parting tool slash groove tool. Now I've got dial indicators. I've got a dial indicator that I can set to zero. And I also have a digital readout. 
So what I want to do is my groove tool or parting tool is uh, almost a tenth of an inch wide. I think it's like 093. But I'm just going to go with a tenth of an inch. So I'm at the end of my part. I bumped up against the part. Now I want to dial the thing in. One inch, fifty thousandths. There's one inch and fifty thousandths. So let's see if we can see this. And I'm at one inch fifty thousandths, and now I'm gonna put a little groove in it. Thread remover. Touch the part, and I'm going to go in 20 thousandths. 10, 20. Let's see if that'll be enough. If it ain't, I'll come back and do it again. Now, okay, we've got the, uh, we've got it ready to go for threads here. Now, what I'm doing. is threading it to a half 28. Now you can use half 20, half 24, half 28. You may have it laid around, you might have to buy it. But I was able to buy this set right here for right around 12 bucks, give or take. If you want to order from China, you can get the set for under $10 shipped. So, I mean, these aren't the best in the world, but for cutting plastic, they're just fine. Now, I also have another one. It's smaller, but the problem you have with the smaller ones is the thread relief. And on this Delrin, it tends to load up your die pretty hard and heavy, so you have to keep backing this off. So you've got to take your time with cutting these threads, or this will happen. See that right in there? It'll start messing your threads up. If you don't, like this one came out pretty nice. This one here, as you can see, it loaded up. And there's about four threads in there that it, it kind of flattened out. It'll still work, but it's just not as pretty as a, as a real nice thread on there. So Now here's how I set up my die. Let's get in here. Bring up my tail stock. And I've got a a chuck. And normally here's the the jaws that grab the the drill bit so I just run them out of the way now I got a good square edge here that'll keep this square locker down okay now it's square so Keep a little pressure against it and just start running it in by hand. And I'm going to do, oh, maybe a turn, turn and a half or two while keeping a little bit of pressure on it to keep it square. Okay, now that's got it started. Now that it's started, you can run it on by hand, but you need to keep the threads clean. So run it in a few turns, but don't let it load up and then back it off. Clean your die. At a certain part, you won't have to pull it all the way off. Just back it up a little bit. 
and you can run this on by hand. I also have a jog button, but I haven't had much luck with cutting the threads all at once because the die will load up. So if you cut it like this, just take your time. Keep that plastic cleared out so this uh, so that your die don't load up. And we'll keep going until we've got our threads cut. But it's important to back this thing up because of the way this material acts. It's stringy and it'll load your die. Now you don't have that problem with the tap for some reason. The tap doesn't do this, but the die does. So, just remember, if you're going to make one of these, take your time with the threads. And so the guys that had a little mini lathe, this would be a good little project for a mini lathe because it's soft material and it's going to be easier on you, it's going to be easier on your tooling but you do have to cut threads. So for you guys that have been shying away from threads here would be a good place to start learning how to use a tap and a die. You know before it was it was handy to to do it with the bolt because the threads were already on it and you could get a nut so some of the stuff was already made for you. Now this is, if you want to make one out of Delron, you're going to have to do this. So don't be in a hurry. Take your time cutting your threads. And you'll wind up with a nice part. And this is easy to do by hand. There's not a lot of resistance. It's, it's cutting pretty good. Now I have tried oil. You could try different cutting fluids on it if you're not getting a finish that you like. I've tried using a little oil on it, but I'm going to cut it dry this time just to see how it comes out. I said as long as I don't let this die load up, it ought to come out really nice but as you can see this is some stringy stuff so it doesn't act like steel wood we're almost there I said I want to get good I want to get some good threads on it so I'm going to take my time Almost there, and I take it right up to the shoulder of the groove that I cut. So, don't want to go any farther than that. All right. Now, let's get the die off of here and we'll take a look at what we got. They came up pretty good. So I've got a nut here that got undercut somewhere down the line. I'll just screw it on here real quick to see how it's going on. Oh yeah, that's doing that's doing good. So yep. it goes all the way to the end. Very nice. So that's all there is to cutting a Delrin. Like I said, don't, don't get in a hurry with it and you'll get a nice thread. So let's take a look at it. And 
Yeah. I'll just show you this one because that one's hard to see and I don't want to take it out there. Normally I wouldn't cut these off like I did. My next step would be to drill. Uh, center drill, drill it and ream it to the one an inch two hundred thousandths. But these I cut off just to so that I can show you what you get with these. This is a half 28 die that I got off of uh, eBay for about 12 bucks, 12, 13 dollars. Like I said, you can get them cheaper if you want to order them through China. That's your call. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I'm gonna the the next video I do, I'll drill and tap the thing, and uh, I'll show you some. Uh, I'll show you some of the anomalies of this material and how it uh, it machines a little different than metal. Just things to be aware of, and gives me something to do in this downtime. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more. I'll be back soon with uh, the follow-up to this. Thanks again. Bye.